Hello, I'm Dr. Russell Blaylock. I'm a retired neurosurgeon having practiced neurosurgery for the past 24 years. I'm also a visiting professor of biology at Bellhaven College in Jackson, Mississippi. I lecture widely, I write a newsletter, I've written three books, and I spend most of my time studying the brain, how it functions, and mainly how to protect your brain. I'm going to share some of the secrets I've learned about brain protection with you today. Now the brain is the most complex organ in the body, but it's also the most complex thing we know of the entire universe. There's no man-made computer, no supercomputer, that can anywhere match what the brain could do, even in its most simple computation. And the brain remains this mystery. We don't really know what produces consciousness. We're not sure where memory originates. All the different parts of the brain concerned with behavior, how we feel emotions, all of these things remain mostly a secret. But we also know a lot of things about the brain that we never knew before. One of the things that we used to think was that the brain never changed, that the brain we were born with was the brain we died with. This was based on the idea that the brain cells don't reproduce. And if they don't reproduce, the brain must not change. But what they've learned is that the processes connected to those cells change constantly. New synapses, new dendritic connections, new pathways are being developed in the brain constantly. They're destroyed and repaired, and they increase their complexity. And one of the startling things we found is the brain becomes much more complex the older we get. We call this the wisdom of the aging. The philosophers have written about this, but wisdom is based scientifically on this complexity where all these connections grow even into the age of 100 years. And they did a study on 100-year-olds and found that this change in the brain is continuous even then. We call this change plasticity. Now, in order for the brain to be able to become more complex and maintain its function, it has to be fed properly. It has to have adequate rest. And it has to avoid certain toxins. Now, the thing that's most important is feeding the brain properly, giving it what it needs. We know that the brain requires a lot of sugar, what we call glucose, for its function. That is its main fuel. At least 80% of the brain's fuel is glucose. It gets this glucose by metabolizing complex carbohydrates. We also know that the brain requires some very complex molecules in order to function and that it gets these molecules from our food. Now, if we're not eating a diet that is consistent with supplying these things that the brain needs, our brain is not going to function properly. This can translate into such things as insomnia, difficulty thinking clearly, having difficulty with our memory, difficulty with our speech. So we see that it can have a profound effect. It can also affect our behavior. We know that violence, depression, uh, many of the obsessive behaviors are all related to diet and what we eat. 